Lab 10, malware analysis 3, advanced static analysis. And in this lab, we are going to practice advanced static ana analysis techniques. Uh, disassemble, disassemble malware, find the addresses or routines, functions, data, and variables, and find the code flowchart or malware to see its uh, logic, how it works. There are many uh, disassemblers can be used to disassemble binary programs, for example, Ida Pro, Gaidra, Rodea. These two are open source and free. This one is uh, the free version, is uh, functionality is limited, but it's uh, good enough for us to complete this uh, lab. So, for advanced usage, you may uh, have a look on Gaidra and uh, Rodea. For rudimentary uh, practice, for example, for these uh, labs, we can complete with this add up. As we discussed uh, during the lecture, you are suggest to install this uh, add up free, install with the default option. Once it's done, it looks like this add up freeware here, 64. This lab is revised from the SAMS class analyzing malware with uh, at a Pro. So if you want to have a look on the reference, you can go to this uh, link. In this lab, we have uh, several tasks here. Totally, we have uh, two tasks. The review questions of further uh, practice assembly code in Jasmine C construct in uh, assembly. If you want to learn more, you are strongly suggest to go to this uh, Sam's class and uh, practice these uh, projects. And today we are going to complete these uh, tasks. Here task one is get you to become familiar with this IDA Pro. Then with the techniques you learned, we are going to complete task two. In task two there are four crack me's. Find the conditions for each crack me to see the con congratulation message. And for each crack me, steps need to be completed as are shown as uh, in the first one, which means for each crack me, you need to complete these uh, steps and take snapshots. Since they are all uh, similar, they only list out the steps for this uh, first one. For the other three, you also need all these steps. Well, first, let's learn how to use uh, uh, add a pro. I suggest you will install this one. If you didn't, you just uh, right click, go to uh, its official website, download the Windows version, and install it. The malwares are provided here. You right click, open it here, then uh, download it. I would like to create a folder first. This is a uh, lab turn, right? Create a folder called lab turn. Lab 10. Then I download uh, the malware, download and save it uh, into a uh, lab 10. Yeah, it's uh, completed. The password is malware. Copy it and extract here. Paste the password. Okay, you see uh, the the samples are provided. There are f furthermore, so you can go through all the other stuff. For example, uh, 
CPP program, the source code is provided and you can follow the, the further project in Sam's class to complete this uh, stuff. You have installed Visual Studio in our last lab. You should be able to compare this stuff. For example, this glob.cpp, it can compare and generate a glob.exe. This print.cpp can be compared and generate a print.exe. So you want to learn more? Please go to uh, those further uh, references. And you are strongly encouraged to do so. Here there is a lab 0 fail dash 01.dll with an add free to analyze this uh, lab 0 fail dash 01.dll. So we are doing add free. Here click OK. Now you see uh, I have uh, opened a lot of files. Uh, so you just choose a new. Then in the lab 10, right, choose a lab 0 file dash 0 one dot dll open it. Choose all default option, click OK. Now it's uh, loaded, you can see uh, by default it shows a graph view. Here is a graph overview. I think you all pro, uh, played games, there are lots of games, you have a map overview, right? You can see the overview of your game. Here, we read this uh, graph overview, we can see the flow chart of this program. Here, the hex view, you can see uh, Inside the memory, they are just the binary data structures. See the structures defined in the program. Anums, here there is no anums generated. Imports, you see these uh, library functions are used by this program. And you see there are drag started, which means uh, related to registry, process, related to process. Related to service, create service, set service, and uh, files, uh, copy file, move file, get currently directly, set currently directly, and uh, so because you have practiced a lot with these things. Uh, can find all the inputs, imports. Here you can also see some network, networking functions, socket, select, export. Usually uh, exports they are available from dynamic libraries. Here you can see some uh, functions are exported. We will focus on this uh, Either view, the default view, a assembly. Press uh, your sp space bar. You can switch to the text view. Here is the text view. Right, the text view, you see the arrows. Of the jump, J N Z. It's not zero. Then the jump to to this place. Here you see jump short location. is one zero zero. Well, you move your mouse, hover, hover it here, you will see the code where it jump to. 1001 file, 1B one file, right? You can also follow this arrow, you see here. One B file, B file is, uh, is this one. But here it, uh, uh, oops, the, the arrow change is this, uh, dashed line here, the dashed line, JNZ, it jumped there, 
and with this text view, it is a little hard to see the st st stuff. And you press your sp space key again, you can switch to this uh, graph view. As we learned, the arrow, the red arrow means a conditional jump not taken. The green arrow means a conditional jump taken, which means a condition satisfied. Then go to this one. We know in IDS 110, you learn the program flow chart, right? Here it means yes, come to this place. You know, you come to other place. And on this uh, tab, on this uh, panel, in the function views, here these functions, they are named by this uh, adder. So it's not the fun the real or minimal or meaningful function name. They are not readable. You can uh, open other views in this uh, view, open sub views. Here you can see you have quick view, disassembly, and so on. There are lots of stuff. Import, export, function strings. For example, strings. Here you see these strings. You use bin text to extract strings in our basic uh, static analysis. Right here, you see you with this adder pro, you can extract strings in this ID. I see lots of strings here. You, you, we are familiar with these things from the output of bin text. Right? Bin text, you see these things. Here, you can also see this stuff. There are lots of interesting strings you can find. Here, for example, command.exe, cmd.exe. These are uh, string views in this uh, IDA view.a. Here, if you want to show the address of each uh, instruction and change the options inside the option, you can set colors, fonts, shortcuts, and so on. In this general, uh, you see uh, there are several tabs for uh, cross reference strings, browser, graph, misc. Uh, in this, this, this assembly here, line prefix, you can choose this one, number of opcode bytes, and type number in six. Then you click OK. I would like to move a little bit lower. Please pay attention. So this part, when I click OK, you will see something comes up. Click OK. Now you see uh, the address comes up and the instructions comes up. You can uh, click, uh, press your left mouse button to uh, drag it to uh, the place you feel comfortable. You can scroll your mouse to zoom in, zoom out. Not zoom in, zoom out, it's just scroll up and down. Here we just set the option, space bar to switch graph mode and text mode. Right. We have done this part now. Find the imports. Of this function get host by name in this uh, imports get host by name double click it and to find this function and see its uh, references used by other uh, functions so in that uh, imports here this imports get host we can right click to see a quick field get host by name uh, show, show up and it's supplied by this library we double click it then we come to here you see this uh, get host by name uh, here is a cross reference used by this uh, Subrouting a function. You can click it, they are all highlighted. You see, they are just show up several places. 
now you can press Ctrl X to see all the cross references to this uh, get host by name right? they are called by those subroutines for further information you can uh, read the online help the help document of this ADA Pro so now we have these uh, references which one you want to have a look you can just uh, double click it in this place it asks us to double click this one and analyze parameters passed to this uh, to the guest host by name so that one is uh, this right? I will double click it here you see we this uh, blinking icon you show is here this is a get host by name we call this function before we call this function we need to uh, pass parameters move eax this offset and that's that offset that you see in on this uh, pop-up menu is the memory location is a variable name called a uh, uh, this is audio pixel p and you can see that gray, the last line in this pop-up box, the last uh, gray line is this is audio picks dot practical malware analysis and so on. It add zero D to this EAX, then push this EAX to the stack onto the stack, and uh, here there is a comment in the name you get host by name so the name is supplied by that this uh, that parameter you see when I put it hover my mouse over this get host by name you can see on this uh, pop-up window is a C language definition get host by name that parameter const char store name so it's a point of point to a string that a string the uh, name double click one of the parameters named this one text field is brought up and here is this location contains a point to a string so here and this is a parameter double click it we come to this place and you see the the stuff when we hover our mouse over it in our graph view we see these things you can also jump here to see this uh, stuff here do you see it on this pop-up menu pix.practicalmalwareanalysis.com Okay, this is the name parameter. Right, we put it here. See it more clearly. Uh, this is audio pix p d b. Then there are single quote quote up that string. Zero, that is zero. So what that that zero means? In C language, the strings are terminated by uh, zero uh, practical malware analysis Here, the name contains this one now switch to this uh, hex view tab find the four bytes starting at this address which can the 32 bit address in little Indian order and find this address. At this address, there is a series of ask value containing the domain that will be resolved by calling the get host by name. Hex view here, this is a hex view. 
uh, is hex view and you see 19040 you see this is a password this is our device. this is our NA here this is all the uh, pics this is what we, we want to find the address it says which address 19040 19040 it is uh, it's a password PWD and you can see other stuff okay now you uh, ask the, to exam examine the code that uh, reference is cmd.exe or slash c again in that uh, string view we find it and uh, double click it to open the other view and it appears in the text mode click the word cmd so it's highlighted and press ctrl plus x to find all the all its uh, cross references and the box appears double click the, this ref There are two boxes of code use this string. One that starts a string with this one, the other starts with this one. This looks like a remote shell executing the commands from the bottom master for either a 32 bit or 16 bit system. In one of our lab, you practice how to execute command on remote system right? when we hacked into the remote system if the uh, windows you can run this uh, command.exe what is a uh, cmd.exe okay now let's uh, find it first we go to the text uh, strings the strings window right here strings window to find that cmd you can use ctrl f cmd here you see this uh, cmd.exe if you want to find a command, you type command, you find the command.exe. The lab asks us to find the CMD. Double click it, go to the adder view. In this uh, hex view, you see the CMD.exe, command.exe, they are here. And you also see some interesting strings. Welcome back. Are you enjoying today? machine uptime and so on right? it looks like uh, it's a conversation between machines here you click this add of your a you see this command like exam cmd dot exe so select it then press ctrl uh, x just click it to select it ctrl x you see the cross reference. Double click it, then you come to this uh, flow chart view. Uh, you see on the left side, it choose this one. On the right side, it choose command dot exe. This shows cmd dot dot exe. So it looks like uh, there is a option you compare with something. To find the system, uh, whether it's a 16-bit system or 32-bit system, CMD, you know, uh, on on our uh, Windows, if you type command prompt, this command prompt, you can uh, open file location. You see what is the name. Here's a shortcut. Right click, open the properties. Here you see it's called cmd.exe. It's a 32 bit or 64 bit. And this command.exe, uh, I, I don't think you are familiar with this one. On those older versions of uh, open system published by Microsoft, a 16 bit system, their command uses this name command.exe. And you scroll down, you see once you run execute that command, 
can see some interesting stuff you know, follow this flow chart to see whether you can uh, find any uh, interesting things Oops. you can go slow to play with this uh, software Now drag the code boxes down to see the module containing hi master. And this looks like a message the bot sends to the bot master, further confirming that this is a RAT, a remote administration tool. I dragged down. Here I see a quit. Scroll down. Actually, we can uh, go back. Here in this uh, string wheel, you scroll down here. You see the hi, master. Welcome back. Are you enjoy today? machine uptime, machine uh, add time, and so on. So this is, here is a uh, clear. Uh, in the text mode, we see those stuff. Hey, master. Right now, I'm close this adder and don't save the database. You can see it can be used to find imports, exports, structures, Enums and the hex wheel to see is the contents loaded into the memory and the string builds. You can see all the strings extracted from this file. This uh, adder wheel, this assembly wheel, it provides a uh, graph wheel and a text wheel that you see how the program goes on. It uh, has uh, some other functionalities. You can go through this uh, manual or you go through is uh, online help to see how to use uh, other functionalities. Okay, now uh, close this adder, don't save the database. Here we just close it. Here you see in this uh, exit dialog, check this, one. don't save the database. So you have to take a screenshot of this one. For this step, close the adder, don't save the database. Now, the major part. We just went through the basic usage of the adder pro free version, the freeware. Now we will use adder pro to find the conditions for each crack me to see the congratulation, congratulation message. So for each one, for even this one, let's try this one. It asks you to find a password. The last one asks you to find a command line. Run the in the command prompt without parameter. See how to use it. How to use it. So we follow these uh, steps. First, open a terminal command prompt. Before that, I would like to uh, copy this location because I will go into this uh, location inside the command prompt type uh, command prompt click it then type cd right click then it's paste here press enter we are inside the lab turn now you use the dir you see the files correct me right? now run the Crack me, the first crack me. Press enter, you see usage. Crack me, followed by a password. So we don't know what's password. You type password. Then it says uh, fail. We try something others. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Failed. So how could we find, how could we find the password? Now we use the add pro. Here, try guess, see the error message. The error message just says, just says fail. We run add pro again and find the interesting strings. What's the interesting strings we have so far? That is a fail uh, usage, right? So we run this add freeware again. Click OK. Click New. Choose this uh, crack me. The first crack me. Open it. Use the default option. Click OK. Here it says the input file was linked with debug information and the simple file name is here in this one do you want to look for this file at the specified path we don't have that, those things right so we just click no and now this things uh, pops up to find the interesting strings we open the string subview strings su subview strings here you see the interesting things where you found the password congratulations top secret unknown runtime stack memory these are the strings right and the interesting strings i think are the the first first uh, three strings are quite interesting we see this one And here we see this usage. For other stuff, uh, you see there are these are functions, right? Windows API. So just for a guess, what's that password? Is this one top secret? You can have a try. Top secret that's it you, f you found the password congratulations and for that field we can double click this field to see the flow chart of the this uh, program here find the interesting strings jump to the view of function flow chart find the conditions that show the congratulation message and the types condition that has uh, commands or command line in the command pro prompt to make sure you got the conditions. So here from that file, double click here. Now you see uh, the flow of the program. We can press space bar. Fail to this program in graph mode. Only instruction belonging to functions can be displayed in graph mode. So this here are the data. So in the data, we we want to go to the function for use the data here, right? We press uh, double click this one. Okay, drag it to the right place. Here you see uh, it looks like uh, the judgment is here, and if you succeed, you get this one. You found the password. Congrats. If you failed, get this one. So condition is here, and you see here the call this string string cap CMP string com compare, and on the pop up menu you see this subroutine is a J string CMP. It compare two strings, right? String one and string two. It compare your input with the true password, and the true password is a uh, Top secret. You can see how the parameters are passed to this string clump. Right? This is string one, and that's the string two, and that string two is top secret. Right? You will see from the pop-up menu, a uh, pop-up dialog, the top secret. And this string one is what you typed in the program. You see that arc four. That arc four. 
is the parameter we typed. And from this flowchart, we know the secret is the top secret. The condition shows the congruential message. It, your input need to match the uh, true password. The top secret then is done, and uh, you can try it again. Actually, we we already uh, tried it right? just by guess. We we found that this is a simple uh, crack me. Now for others, you can do the go through the same steps to find uh, the true password. For the last one, you will find a command line. So now for that uh, tool, we can just click open. Here, don't save the database. Click OK. Open the tool. Click OK. Here, click No. Now, again, we want to find the interesting stuff. Now on the left side, these functions, we most of them, we don't know the true meaning with a few of them. Here, for example, this uh, Comparison, we can find it. Right, this one. You will press Ctrl X to see the cross reference called this function. Click OK, then you come to this uh, flowchart. Here, fail. Here, you found the password. Do you see it? The true password. Right, then you can try it. Now, the third one. Don't save the database. Click OK. Click No. Again, we want to find this string comparison. Choose it. Press Ctrl X. Here we have two of them. So we can try the first one. Have a look. Here, the first one. Now we see something interesting. First comparison. You will jump to a second comparison, then you will get congratulations, you, you found the password. Otherwise, it says fail. Second password was wrong. In this place, it says fail. First word was wrong. Now you see, in this flowchart, it will compare two passwords, right? And you already see the first password here and the second password here. So it'll compare two passwords. But in your uh, lab, please follow these steps. For each step, take, for example, these steps, these two steps, you can use a single screenshot. For example, the third one. First, uh, without any stuff, just runs name, third one. It says how to use it. Crack me one two three dash three password one password two. So then you guess it. Password one p one password two p two. It says first password was wrong. Actually both password was wrong. But you from that flowchart it will check whether the first one is right or not. If it's right, then it will continue to check the second one. Right? As we see it here. It will check the first one first. If you failed, first uh, word, word was run. If it's right, it come to this uh, comparison to check the second one. If your second failed, it failed. Second word was uh, run. Okay, there are two passwords. Now the last one. The last one we can uh, run it. Uh, have a look. Last one for usage game three dot exe followed by a password. So what is that game three dot exe? If I type this way, game three dot exe pass. It says usage. So this is a weird, right? Now for this one, 
you are asked to find a command line. So, what's a command line? These are command line. These are all command line. And it says game three dot exe. So there is no dot backward slash. So I can remove that dot backward uh, slash like this. This just says uh, game three. So it looks like if we type like this, it is there failed. Okay, now we get something interesting from here, right? It says just says fail. So how about I type password pass fail. Now let's uh, analyze it. We open it. The last one don't save the database. Click OK. Open the last one. Now click OK. Click No. Again we find this function string copy choose it, press Ctrl X and again we have two comparison, choose the first one have a look here you see uh, how it compares compare game3.exe so then it, uh, otherwise it will say fail so it looks like uh, we failed from this place, game3 I did supply a uh, game3.exe right? But I still failed. Now, if you supply game three, then here you see a there is a password compare incorrect password. Otherwise, it says congratulations, you solved the crack me. So how could we get this uh, game three dot exe? Here, I did type this game three dot exe, but it says fail. So what's the problem? Now we need to uh, check these uh, arguments in C language. Those arguments here in a command line, the arguments. This program name means uh, argument zero. The, sec the second one, argument one, argument three, and so on. For example, this one. This one we have uh, argument zero is this uh, program name, arg one is this game three dot exe, arg two is this uh, pass. So this uh, other arg one, but they all use uh, arg four to represent these, these things. But how could we know the the how the pass the argument to the program. Here you see a uh, arg zero and it will compare. Then come to this place. So that is arg zero. As we discussed uh, the program name is arg zero. So the program is is arc zero, so maybe we can modify the program name to uh, to game three. So this uh, four we change it to game three. Rename it game three. Then we can type game three dot exe. And uh, with a password, pass. Okay, now we we move to incorrect pass. So we check here. It's not a uh, usage. It's not fail. Fail is uh, from this place, and it's uh, incorrect password, which means we move to this place, right? We move to this place, and you see the password is here. Two password. Drum Derry. So we can just run it here. Uh, Drum Derry. Congratulations. So we solve it. 
So the trick here is uh, we need to determine which uh, determine the arguments passed to a program from the command line. The argument zero is the program itself. Okay, you can see uh, the malware analysis. There are lots of guess and uh, try errors to find uh, how it works.